Good morning, everyone. Um, thank you very much for joining. I I thought we'll have a very less audience, but yeah, thanks all that you got up early and uh, joining. And also, um, thank you, Dr. Chen and Valerie, for um, um, being so kind to allow me to do the defense while you can join while you're joining remotely. Uh, so I'll be presenting uh, my work on data-driven and knowledge-based strategies for realizing the snow crowd effect. Oh yeah, and before I start, uh, important thing, um, please help yourself with the refreshments. I forgot to mention that. Um, uh, so I'll start with uh, what is wisdom of crowd. It is this uh, effect that has been uh, observed uh, over a century ago uh, that a collective judgment of a group of individuals is often more accurate than uh, all the individuals and later on uh, there are several domains in which this effect has been observed and recently it has been uh, vaulted into the book written by James Sirueki who identified that uh, along with having some degree of domain knowledge uh, and as well as uh, having an appropriate aggregation uh, judgment mechanism um, and motivation to do the judgment if the individuals in a crowd should be diverse and independent for us to observe this uh, effect of wisdom of crowd. Uh, in fact, uh, diversity has been at the core of uh, intelligence and, um, uh, and, and that's what uh, even Marvin Minsky uh, uh, said. And um, in this dissertation, we're exploring uh, whether we can identify the kind of diversity that plays a role in selection of a crowd that is collectively more intelligent. And that is the core question that we want to answer uh, in this dissertation. And for that, um, we have chosen the domain of uh, Fantasy Premier League uh, because of several reasons uh, uh, that uh, we have an available outcome data so that we can measure the wisdom of crowd effect. The individuals uh, playing this Fantasy Premier League, they have motivation to provide a judgment because their uh, uh, fantasy score depends on it, they have some degree of domain knowledge and there is a well established uh, uh, judgment aggregation mechanism uh, for the captain prediction task in Fantasy Premier League. So um, if I quickly describe the existing research in the, uh, in the domain of wisdom of crowd then some of the earlier research studies they explored the domains in which such an effect is observed and after several evidences um, the researchers started exploring whether uh, they can select a subset of a small crowd such that uh, their collective judgment is better than uh, uh, most of the individuals or even larger crowd um, but in this studies uh, so these are the references for these studies uh, so in these studies, uh, the researchers were uh, exploring the past performance-based uh, crowd selection, uh, but we may not have such a data available, and hence there have been research studies that have explored diversity-based crowd selection. However, in these research studies, the researchers they rely on the perceived diversity where they ask the individuals in a crowd whether you consider your crowd to be diverse or not. And there has been one study that has uh, explored the inferred diversity based crowd selection and that is what the core topic of this thesis is. Uh, uh, however, in this study the diversity was inferred uh, using the generic uh, posts that were made about some domain by se uh, some individuals but in this study what we are exploring is the role of uh, social media and in inferring diversity and whether 
the diversity inferred from social media allows us to do an intelligent crowd selection as uh, the users nowadays they share their they like to share their opinion and perspective about uh, different judgment problems and hence such a data is available for us to do this kind of studies and um, hence we are trying to explore whether it is possible to infer diversity using social media data so that is the first question that we want to explore in this dissertation the second question that we want to explore is that um, what kind of diversity can lead to an accurate uh, prediction and a third question we want to explore that is that uh, does such a diversity measure allows a wise crowd selection and for that the techniques that we have explored to start with are the genetic clustering techniques and the crowd selection technique of the techniques applied on the social media posts shared by this user and then uh, we also developed uh, an enhanced uh, clustering technique that along with the social media posts can consider other user attributes in identifying the similar or diverse uh, crowd so that is what i will be discussing today uh, and uh, the data set that i have uh, for this whole problem consists of uh, fantasy premier league uh, related uh, tweets from the users using which uh, i'll be in uh, uh, I'll, I'll, yeah. we infer the diversity and at the same time we also have uh, the actual predictions made by these users from the fpl.com uh, uh, website and um, these are just some uh, statistics about the data set and uh, uh, more importantly the way we compute a wisdom score that we will be using as the evaluation measure is by, so for a crowd we consider the most number of uh, the choice that was selected by most number of users and the points associated with the choice uh, refers to the wisdom so, score. So what was the time period for this? I mean the 6 million and so much average per user? Yeah, so we started this, uh, we started collecting this data I believe in uh, uh, October of uh, 2016. Uh, and then um, uh, we collected this data all the way until uh, 2017. So I believe it was uh, seven to eight months uh, time period. But the tweets themselves, weren't some of them scraped from timelines yeah. prior to the actual? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. So, so, uh, um, so basically what we did was that first we collected uh, so as we have the, the first box in here, first we started with uh, some set of tweets to identify the users. Once we identified the user, we went back uh, into their uh, timeline of all the tweets that they made uh, 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 before uh, 2016 and considered those as the final data set. So, no, because, the oh, sorry. so because the decision depends on when they tweeted and its relationship to when the decision was made. Right? So. Yes. Well, I mean, yeah. That's your, your defense. So you <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, so what we want to infer is that um, the perspectives that they shared about the game, as well as uh, different uh, teams and players based on which we want to identify their interest. And so that's why. Yeah. So, uh, 3,000 or so, the crowd size is that, that is the crowd size, right? Mm -hmm. uh, how does that compare with the crowd sizes of previous crowd wisdom yeah, studies so involving any quantitative evaluations? So that's a good question. So um, traditionally in this research, the, the sample size has been uh, a few hundreds of sample size because they have to gather those people into one room and then perform this study and a um, few hundred yeah I mean that's the max that uh, have been uh, performed but um, in this we were able to have uh, thousands of users as uh, 
in how to do such a But that's not, studies. to be clear, that's not the actual crowd size we look at. That's yeah, the population that's the size from which we selected size. our crowds. Yeah. Like these are 3,385 unique individuals yes. from whom we can assemble crowds of different sizes. But most of the crowd sizes you're going to hear about are much smaller than that, like of the order of 10 and 20. Yeah. This, you is, had, this is just the available data set that I got, yeah. subset that you got from sample yeah. size. I would now say. this would be all people who talk about fantasy football. Yes. Um, did you you clearly have a CA selection bias here in that uh, once you only selected those who uh, uh, are very uh, frequent, uh, you know, tweeters, right? People who are uh, very few people. Uh, tweet 1,200 uh, or 1,700 tweets uh, in one year, two years, three years uh, that you might have at most uh, monitors. So I assume that the to total, you know, even if you go went back for past tweets by these some of these guys or all of these guys, I assume you probably are limited to maybe about two, three years, three years maybe. Yeah, I think three to four years um, went back uh, until. At least uh, five thousand, at most five thousand tweets per user. So whichever occurred, uh, I mean, um, and and then Twitter it has some limitation. Twitter API it has some limitation. It can go only until. Some right, but nevertheless, time. these are uh, you know rather uh, vociferous or you know people who are talking about uh, you know, tweeting very often. That's yeah, yeah. selection only. Right? Second, yeah. Then uh, of. Even though this is every whatever your average or median uh, number is, uh, there is no indication here as to how many of those tweets are actually about your subject matter at PL. There, there, there is uh, so we have. Or these are only for the tweets that actually talk about at PL. No, so uh, this consists of tweets that uh, uh, may not mention uh, FPL or uh, soccer keywords as well. So in in the first paper that we published, we published these stats that how many of those, how many of these tweets actually consisted of the soccer keyword instead of the FPL keywords and, and that. But 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 yeah, I mean, um, all these users they are active on Twitter and they they are actively playing uh, uh, fantasy Premier League uh, because we wanted to make sure that um, they they have at least some number of tweets to be. Have you justified anywhere in the paper or in dissertation that um, look these are the choices are made and that these choices are appropriate for um, evaluating this visual crowd phenomena that um, uh, and and uh, you know at least give some argument against uh, biasing data to give you indication that otherwise won't you know some people can really question how you chose this data and whether this particular um, force are representative in a broad sense. Uh, yeah, I, I, I have to, you know, do for uh, people who are very frequent speakers, uh, frequent speakers on the topic, um, exhibiting uh, some, you know, knowledge of the, you know, thing, are opinionated versus not opinionated, or there are a lot of other, so have, have, has that been done? So what happens here is that we, um, when we collected the initial set of tweets, we did not consider all the users that had at least uh, five FPL related tweets or at least five tweets that mentioned FPL keyword. Now, um, one reason to consider uh, to, to do that is because we wanted to make sure that the users that we are considering they have uh, at least some degree of uh, domain knowledge and uh, more interest into into this uh, fantasy premier league and um, we have the kind of data that we need using which we can infer um, the diversity in this domain to for the for the wisdom of crowd study right but then uh, question that would arise is what if you chose uh, uh, a sub those users who are most uh, you know who talked about Philips for most and ended your study? What if you chose those students who had strong opinion? Uh, you know, so there may be tweets saying uh, you know somebody's playing here that doesn't say anything, but there's a tweet that says 
this team will win by X number of points. That's mm -hmm. a strong opinion. Yes. Uh, or you know things. So, so what that, is, that is one type of diversity measure that can be considered here. Mm -hmm for uh, evaluating the study. So, so, so there are several diversity measures that you can uh, come up with. To sort of fill in uh, what you are not saying, I think there are two things that you mentioned to me yesterday which I think is relevant here. So one is that you have studied the effect of size. Yes. And the other yes. one is that you also looked at the effect of their expertise yeah. and the size. So those are issues that you have considered. Yes. I, I also um, want to say, so regarding this issue of where, you know, selectively sampling vociferous tweeters, um, that's probably true, but the, I, you know, the justification is there's more data from which to extract signal from, mm -hmm. from those people. So I don't think, um, y y you can come back and say, well, maybe this doesn't apply to people who tweet less. And even if we were to find out it doesn't apply, it doesn't, we can't conclude that the reason our technique doesn't apply to people who uh, tweet less, we, we can't conclude that it's because they have, f whether they have fewer p tweets per se or whether they're different in some other way. So, um, yeah, I, I think it's sufficient that we should show the effect with this population. I think that's still an interesting finding. Um, that's true. And uh, with the, you know, if you want to uh, come up with a social uh, technique based on s uh, social activity, where uh, more pe taking opinion of more people le lead to better prediction, uh, you can say well, for the, even if non not not on social media, but otherwise people who are known expert or people who are most opinionated or people who are listening, those could be uh, you know. And then demonstrating that such selection lead to a better choice, that's, that's a legitimate thing. But um, how issue is, how can you say this is a repeatable strategy in different situations to, you know, uh, come up with, uh, you know, to, 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 to enact that all of, uh, none of us are smarter than all of us kind of strategy, right? Um, are you going to show any data from the HFC project? Um, I have, I mean, I, I have a couple of slides for okay. one slide for that, but not the detailed results that we have. Uh, um, but yeah, um, so to the extent that you can, to the extent to which you can collect some data about users to infer something about that domain. Um, you should be able to see that because here the number of tweets for the domain were uh, limited only to five to ten. So um, that that's that's the minimum that that we that, uh, that we want based on the keywords. So if you have uh, enough that's data about the you domain want for selection into this input, those users in this corpus. But you could still, if you want, you could still do a study showing, well, we'll take a group where people have minimum 100 tweets and see what happens. Yeah, so um, we have such controlled studies, but that are not based on the number of tweets. They are based on the, uh, their expertise defined based on past performance and then uh, we have uh, randomly selected uh, samples within from within this crowd, and then we have those controlled studies. Um, so yeah. So uh, Rizwan says my uh, thesis statement is uh, diversity inferred from social media using knowledge improves uh, collective intelligence for event prediction without using historical uh, performance data. And so at the core, the problem that we are solving is the diverse crowd selection. So for that, first we have explored uh, uh, several content-based uh, clustering techniques where the co by content I refer the content shared by these users on uh, social media. And then uh, we, have explore, uh, we have come up with a, a technique that combines the content, um, the link or relationship information 
and the domain specific uh, knowledge to identify the diverse crowd as well as uh, characterize uh, such a diverse crowd. And um, the idea here is that uh, once you have the clustering which represents similar set of users, if you pick one user at random from the cluster, you can come up with the diverse crowd. Uh, so for such a diverse crowd selection strategy, strategy as a different diverse crowd selection strategy, we have also explored multi-objective optimization based diverse crowd selection. So I'll be discussing these things next. Um, um, I'll quickly summarize this part. So this is the so these are the publications uh, related to each one of this. And um, so first we started this uh, whole study by um, making sure whether the data that we have has at least uh, some form of signal. And um, I won't discuss this into the detail, but um, to summarize, uh, we represented the user that we have um, uh, based on that uh, using a word to egg uh, measures uh, computed based on their content and then identify and, and then studied whether the diversity defined based on the cosine distance uh, for this uh, word to egg uh, vectors can actually lead to a better crowd uh, or more intelligent crowd. Um, another uh, content based uh, diversity that we explored was by identifying intent from the tweet instead of considering uh, all the words and word vectors associated with it and um, then selecting the diverse crowd based on the two of the intents that have been identified to be used in the captain selection for the fantasy premier league and for both of these studies we identified uh, some form of signal in the data that uh, the diverse crowd selection based on the content can give us a crowd that have a better prediction than a baseline that is uh, crowd selected at uh, random. Um, uh, so in the next study we considered uh, this user representation where each user now is represented with a word to echo vector and then uh, in this study we explored uh, various clustering techniques including uh, spectral clustering using one distance measure and uh, multi clustering using multiple distance measure to make to to see whether we can come up with uh, which clustering techniques can get us better crowd and, and then we also explored a crowd selection technique so in this uh, we explored a crowd selection uh, technique is that is selecting crowd at random picking one user from each cluster and uh, also explored crowd selection based on uh, maximizing multiple distance measure that we also used in the clustering process hey, this, this user representation actually content based right so um, uh, so for this study, we compared uh, the diverse crowd with uh, expert crowds where the expertise was uh, extracted based on the past performance of these users. And we also compared it with the random crowd that is uh, we form a crowd of size X by selecting X users at random. And uh, we computed the wisdom score and we also computed the judgment diversity to see whether the crowd that we select here have actually has a, a diverse uh, judgment. So for this study the first question that we were exploring was that um, can this lead to a wise, wiser crowd and um, if yes then um, how do those different clustering techniques uh, perform in compared to each other for us to come up with uh, such a crowd and um, how does the different the crowd selection strategies compare and at the end of this study we, uh, we found that uh, the crowd selected based on uh, multiple distance measures in clustering and uh, in the multi-objective optimization performed the best and uh, we refer to that crowd as smart crowd for the uh, for, for the rest of the 
uh, results and um, in this study we try to see whether there is any kind of correlation between the inferred diversity that is the diversity inferred from the content and the judgment diversity and we found that the dive crowds selected based on the diversity of the content actually had uh, more judgment diversity or, or they were actually showing uh, more diverse uh, judgments. Um, in this, so this, uh, this is the box plot uh, where the middle red line refers to the median and then upper quartile, lower quartile. Uh, so in this, uh, we compared the crowd selected uh, based on the strategies that I described with the crowd selected at random and we found that uh, uh, such a diverse crowd, referred as smart crowd here, um, they outperform the crowd selected at uh, random with a large margin. And in this study, we compared that such diverse crowd with the crowd selected based on the expertise criteria. So there has been previous studies that has already identified that um, in this domain, the expertise based uh, crowd selection can lead to a wiser or better performing crowd. And um, in our study, we found that without using such a historical expertise data, only using the Twitter content, we can assemble a crowd that performs equivalent to the crowd selected from top 5% of the experts and actually beats a crowd, beats crowds that are selected from top 10% and top 20% experts. Yet the crowd selected... Hey, Yes. Just a quick question for my mm -hmm. own personal needs. <laughs> How many people are in these crowds that you're looking at? Is this six and 12 or what, what's the number of people in the crowd? Six. Six. Yes. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Why, given that you had such large number compared to, you know, pre social media or uh, other thing, why do the study with just six kind of number? So there is always an interest in the wisdom of crowd for the smaller crowd selection. So I have one result where I show that uh, the smaller crowd actually performs better than the larger crowd, but um, there are also other practical reasons that um, um, sometimes you may not be able to get the opinions from a large subset of users. So if you can come up with a criteria where you pre-identify small subset, then you only need to poll those. Yeah, but if your users. sample size was maybe 100 and you get 6, that is understandable. When your sample size is one or of magnitude larger. So he, th this is a study where we performed a very large, uh, varied the size all the way. Actually, in this one, uh, we haven't showed m more than 150, but, but this red line here, it shows that uh, this is where these two lines meet. And what are these two lines? The blue is the crowd selected based on the, the diversity criteria and red is the crowd selected at random. The larger your crowd, the more diversity you get for free just by random yeah. sampling. Exactly. So it's harder to outperform. I mean, we can still apply our clustering algorithm in theory to larger crowds, but there are less dividends for doing so just because um, you get so much diversity for free already in the larger crowd. Yeah. So we perform these experiments all the way up to the crowd size equal to when we consider all the users in, in uh, consider their all the users' opinion. So yeah, I, I understand. The large crowd, the random crowd becomes itself extremely diverse, and that is good. That the results show that. So clearly here, uh, uh, relatively small crowd size uh, that is so-called smart crowd selected with it, some diversity has performed well, right? So that's where. Uh, uh, it's a good, you know, that's where all the plays, all the, you know, future, if you want to devise a system to learn from that. Um, is there any surprise there, uh, or was that kind of known? Uh, has, what has changed, um, given that, uh, what has changed with big data or with, with social media, given that this smaller size could be constructed even um, not necessarily using such thing as social media. Uh, there are advantages of social media in that you know you can just you know pick up the people uh, once they are spoken rather than you have to 
explicitly get the people together and have them give you the data before you uh, do that. So, so there is a volunteering effect and that advantage there is for social media. But otherwise, in any circumstances, social media or not, small size you know, selection is possible more easily done than a large one. It will be very hard for you to get 150 put on a topic or to gather, you know, communicating enough to for you to understand what they are doing if you did not have social media. But small you can. The results are good for smaller one anyway than large one. So the domain of intelligence analysis is a good e example and that's the community I came from when we wrote the original proposal. Uh, we emphasize that as an application. So the rationale is the intelligence analysts are often tasked with making judgments about very particular questions and you can't assemble 200 analysts um, to, to weigh in with the judgment. You have to be more selective and you might assemble a team of like six or seven. So if you had some way of inferencing, you know, which six or seven analysts from this larger community of analysts are most likely to bring diverse opinions to the table, this is a technique you could apply. I mean, you could analyze analysts' past intelligence reports that they've written, what they've published on Intellipedia and other of the intelligence community sort of internal social media platforms. And from that, you could you could infer, you know, what is what is a good small diverse crowd. Fantastic. Uh, now the question uh, is that is that a new result, or uh, is this a reaffirmation of results that was already there, or that nobody else was able to do the results because they could not go, you know, demonstrate, you know, do the evaluations for you know, hundred plus people and. Um, and hence you actually show something new that was not earlier validated. So it's the, it's new result in that it result in the context of uh, being able to select such small subset of individuals using the data that is publicly available. Mm -hmm. But this results the wisdom of smaller, smarter crowd outperforms the wisdom of larger crowd has already been uh, published, but that was using the past performance data. So here, um, one of the things that we are uh, trying to show is that um, you can use this openly available social media data as a proxy of uh, the past performance data that may not always be available. But, uh, okay, uh, all right. So the other required past performance data, but they were able to, uh, at least we were able to uh, um, try with uh, more than 100 uh, yes. cars as more than yes. Um, yeah. yeah, actually I, I was hoping that a crowd size that actually works very well for this would be her, bigger than six. Because when you say 3,000 people crowd, right, six to me looks more like experts. So, uh, I don't know, I was, I was actually expecting the, the, the optimal number to be actually higher than, than six because do you call uh, a set of six people a crowd? Now, I mean, I understand in the intelligence context, if you have only a handful of people, like 20 so, people or 50 people actually involved and close to the classified uh, material, I think six could be a crowd. But in this kind of scenario, I think we need to just... Now, it really depends on your uh, crowd selection technique. If you come up with a really different crowd selection technique, mm -hmm. then it could happen that the crowd of size 30 outperforms uh, all of them that are shown here. But for us, what happened was that um, uh, the optimal number of clusters that we found were six. So uh, the kind of uh, optimal diverse crowd selection strategy considered one user from each cluster. And, and, and so our, our selection technique uh, drove us towards this kind of selection. So it, it really depends. So there were six different clusters from which you pick one from each end. Yeah. Now, is it uh, how how would you argue that this same thing repeats from for one example to the example? This is clearly on this data set, but uh, is that possibly uh, let's say um, space exploration uh, where you know a thing where they're not likely to be this large number, but their diversity is more like fifteen people would be better and twenty two would be better. Is that is that possible and how would one validate that? I know it's hard. You can do so much, but um, is this a is this a general? You know, does it rise to the level of defining a rule of thumb that okay you'll be able to get, or is it that only 
could you say when you can have a very good selection of diversity features um, then uh, you can construct small size uh, uh, of smart you know smart cloud of small size uh, which will perform very well or generally speaking out thing. but when if you, if you have lower uh, control over diversity you probably need to pick a larger crowd is that something possible to so when when we well, yeah, I mean, when we do not have uh, ways to infer diversity, certainly we should go with uh, as large crowd as possible. As, as shown here, the larger the crowd mm -hmm. selected at random, the better the judgment is. So that is certainly there. So I think you can basically say that um, being able to identify diversity and select the right diversity feature for considering smart crowd will allow you to get good results even with small crowd. Faster. Right? Yes, yes, yes. Hey, let me also ask you, so going back to something like the standard page rank kinds of things, right? So are these uh, people involved in this Twitter network, can you infer their centrality and and they are more influential or something like that? So the and if you pick based on that, does that improve matter? Exact, so that is exactly what the next algorithm I'm going to oh, discuss. Okay. So, there we have considered the link information along with the content based diversity and we are trying to include people who are sparsely connected with each other and, and that actually should improve in theory because uh, along with the diversity condition there is also the condition of independence uh, that is there for the wisdom of crowd to exist. So if you have uh, uh, judges that are independently making decisions, not getting influenced by each other, then you should get uh, better wisdom. I see. But if you do not get, I, I, actually we can still uh, explain that in a different way and I'm actually interested in that result. I see. So even if it fails, I think we, we, we should be able to sort of explain in the same way that you say page rank gives you a better wisdom of the crowd uh, kind of effect. Yeah. No, anyway, let, let me see the results. Yeah. So, um, so this in this results, uh, we're showing that uh, how do diverse experts perform, and um, does the benefit of uh, diversity uh, holds even within uh, this, even when the study is performed within a different level of uh, expertise, and we found the answer to that question is yes, and. Uh, the, the diverse experts perform the best um, and that's what that result is about and um, so uh, so this was the content based uh, clustering that's what I refer as content based clustering and uh, one of the limitation uh, for this is that it's considering only the content but it, uh, along with the content we also have uh, other social media user attributes um, such as an age uh, location um, and we should also be able to consider that in identifying our uh, diverse crowd another important thing that the, those previous approaches are missing is the role of uh, context so uh, a crowd that is diverse in one context may not be diverse in in, in another context so for example um, in this picture you have uh, two sets of objects and they are similar if you consider them in the context of them being apple but they are different if you consider them on in the context of being uh, colored apple or having leaves <laughs> oh yeah i didn't do that <laughs> so so yeah that's that uh, so so that's why um, uh, we uh, proposed uh, a knowledge graph enhanced uh, community detection where the community detection is can be interpreted as just another name for graph clustering where along with uh, using the user content as the node attributes we are using the relationships uh, uh, between these users so I'll uh, describe this work into a bit more detail uh, starting with the application and then the state of the art in the community detection and then the approach. So um, the community detection 
uh, algorithms they have uh, you they have been used as the exploratory network analysis so if you are given network data and if you want to infer some things about that data this is a good algorithm for you to use um, as it's an unsupervised algorithm and um, it can uh, allow you to understand your data in, in, in form of groups and specifically you can get answers such as uh, do the conversational groups or communities arise because of the interest in sports or uh, music and um, in this study the measure based on which we define and identify this community that we have used is the so-called modularity measure the I won't go into the detail of the uh, equation but the idea behind this measure is that a group of nodes is interesting if the number of edges within that group is higher than if the nodes were to assign in the groups at random so if you dissect the equation then this is all that that it is and um, the uh, there have been a lot of studies into the community detection starting with only link based community uh, to identifying communities based on link as well as node attributes um, and there have been studies that have modeled these two things to identify the communities as well as uh, characterize them and there have been studies that have used different modeling techniques but one of the important things that all these studies they lack is the role of context so the context can I help us identify better community structure and can help us better you explain the community structure as well so for example um, if I consider uh, a network of users where I have uh, two communities based on uh, um, lab, uh, based on the ground truth data then um, and if I reweigh the edges based on the node attributes, then in the context of the city that they live in, we get a different network structure than one the than the one we get by reweighing these edges based on the context of the state that these users live in. So clearly, this last example can. Uh, uh, give us better community structure and it's easier to identify a community structure. In and they all look the same, so maybe I'm missing something. Uh, the edge uh, density or the thickness oh. of edge is, uh, yeah. So, so that's the whole idea. We are trying to uh, tune these edge weights as we go along to identify this. So basically, you are trying to factor in the uh, communication between uh, people living in Texas talking about Texas uh, uh, yeah, team, right? Something like that? It could be anything. Yeah, if it's about uh, fantasy Premier League, then you can interpret it as a team. If it's about election, then mm. so, yeah. So, but, but this re-weighting will change the community structure, exactly. right? Exactly. So, 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 so that is exactly what I have on this slide. So, um, the re-weighting based on the context changes the community structure. At the same time, we identify this uh, context after we identify the community. So context defines community and community can refer to a different uh, context. So, um, so that is uh, uh, one of the important things that we used in defining our algorithm. We iteratively maximize uh, these two objectives until uh, a stopping condition that is based on the modularity that is be, that is essentially the community goodness criteria is met and um, so so that is the algorithm that i'll describe into a bit more detail and uh, another part of the another important part of, of this algorithm is that um, uh, it is being able to identify the optimal context that identifies the community so um, uh, so basically this is how the algorithm works we have the input graph uh, domain specific uh, knowledge graph in form of hierarchical knowledge graph and an optimal context to start with um, we compute the edge weights using the contextual similarity measure that are described and then we maximize the uh, modularity criteria using a well-known modularity maximization algorithm to identify communities and once we identify these communities, we uh, identify the context 
defining each optimal contest, defining each community, and we, we iterate this process. So um, I'll, I'll go into a bit more detail of this contextual similarity measure. So the way it works is that um, now you, the idea here is to compute the similarity between two nodes given their attributes. So we map these attributes into a hierarchical knowledge graph between uh, two nodes, uh, between two nodes, and then uh, we identify um, all. We we expand that list with uh, with recursively computing the parents all the way until the optimal context that is there for this community, and then we consider the so-called information content of uh, each node that we have identified in the process of uh, going up in the hierarchy because this information content as identified in this uh, equation I C equal to the basic idea here is to weigh the nodes in our knowledge graph such that based on the semantics identified by the position of that node in the taxonomy. So this is a standard way of computing such an information content. And once we have a node list uh, with the information content associated with uh, each one of the node of our knowledge graph, we used a weighted uh, jacquard uh, similarity measure to actually come up with uh, a real number that identifies the similarity between these two nodes. So essentially, um, this similarity measure uh, makes sure that uh, nodes get higher similarity if there are more common concepts uh, between two nodes. Uh, and, and that means that uh, they are closer together in the hierarchy. And concepts are repeated same number of times, which means that uh, the level at which they appear, they, it's also... In the context, right? I mean, with regards to that particular set of ages that are in the knowledge graph. Yes. Yes, so, so, so that's why we need an optimal context until what uh, level we should go up in the hierarchy. And, and, and did you uh, compare that with uh, something in between uh, where uh, you actually ignored, it's like using knowledge graph versus bag of terms. Yeah, so that I, I have reserved for that, yeah. So that, that was our first evaluation, whether such a distance measure can play a role in Community detection. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll describe that. Result. So that's the con and and another important part that is optimal context computation. So uh, the basic idea here is that uh, once we have the community and map all the users of those of that community into the knowledge graph, we want to identify a concept, a specific, a most specific concept that can generalize most of the users attributes uh, of that uh, community so if we go up in the hierarchy we are able to generalize uh, many users in the community but at the same time we are uh, uh, compromising the specific ness uh, uh, that is given by the information content and if we go lower in the hierarchy then we miss uh, several users in the community identified by the purity uh, and we maximize these two criteria to, uh, to, to get there. And uh, we proposed a graph traversal algorithms. I won't go into the details of this, but the idea is what I just uh, described to compute this optimal community context. And then um, this is the final algorithm. Um, so one objective here is to maximize with respect to the community uh, nitty labels and then uh, maximize with respect to the uh, optimal community context. Um, and this is a small example uh, uh, where I want to show the effect of doing this on the example network. So if, if we start with a network where uh, we have this one indicating the fact that there is a link between these two nodes and then plus the similarity that is computed using the most generic concept of the knowledge graph that we start with using the similarity kernel. And if we perform the, uh, uh, the Lewin community detection algorithm, these are the results that we get. And um, using this community, when we um, map that into the hierarchical knowledge graph, we, we identify that uh, the 
these two are the optimal context identifying two of the communities and if we reweigh the edges based on this new optimal context using the similarity kernel then we we uh, end up with a network that has higher modularity than the network that we start with so uh, this algorithm it uh, essentially drives the a network in a way that the communities become more apparent as we as we go along in the iterations and um, so we evaluated this uh, using uh, uh, four standard data sets for which we have the ground truth uh, information available ground truth labels available and uh, the baselines that are considered are, are this um, there's a discussion of why this was selected in, in, in the paper, um, I can discuss offline. Uh, so, so yeah, the first thing that we um, um, verified was that whether such a similarity kernel performs better than uh, the similarity computed only using something like bag of words that is uh, something similar to Jacquard. Um, so in this study, we've identified that, uh, uh, so, Basically, we computed inconsistencies and we define inconsistencies as the fraction of uh, across community edges that had higher weight than uh, within community edges. If we have a good similarity measure, it should assign more weight to the edges that are within the communities than those are across. So based on this measure, we identified that the similarity kernel had uh, less inconsistencies than the uh, than not using such a contextual uh, similarity kernel and knowledge graph. Uh, the next thing we evaluated was the community detection uh, accuracy and uh, we found that, uh, so the KDCOM is the algorithm that I just described. Uh, we found that uh, we achieved a better F measure and uh, jacquard for all three data sets, DBLB, Google Plus and Twitter. And for the Reddit data set, the idea was to get uh, lower entropy weight and the uh, lowest entropy weight we achieved uh, you know, was in this algorithm. Uh, next evaluation was uh, for the community characterization, whether the algorithm is able to appropriately characterize the community. So in this uh, ground truth label data set, the, there, there is a ground truth attribute to community association that can be used for us to um, uh, evaluate this. And, uh, and in this study, we had uh, two communities and uh, we had uh, attribute one associated with community one and attribute two associated with community two as a ground truth. And we identified that the weights... No, I point 0.5 is random, right? No, okay, so here the idea is following. So you have uh, two communities and two attributes. So attribute one, uh, it, uh, so attribute one weight in community one. If it's larger than 0.5, then you consider that attribute one plays a major role in identifying community one. So what we want is that uh, for community one, attribute one, we want the weight higher than 0.5 to be able to uh, infer that uh, this is the, the characterization of the community or this attribute is associated. So what we want here is a value larger than uh, 0 0.5. So if we have one value larger than 0 0.5, another value uh, that is wrong attribute associated with community is uh, less than uh, 0 0.5. So how would the ground truth look like one 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 for everything? I so the ground truth is all ones everywhere. Oh no, so I'm trying to understand. So you have yeah, yeah, your yeah. three approaches for community formation. You have uh, four data sets, and you're comparing it with ground truth. Yes. So ground truth, if I have to write, then it'll be all ones everywhere. Yeah. Well, so so yeah. That, I mean, it can be interpreted that way. So in ground truth, we have attribute one associated with community one. So you can interpret it as uh, 1.0. But uh, if you would run this algorithm and if you get a higher score for one attribute than the other attribute, then you already know that, okay, this is a better match for this. So, so yes, uh, another way to interpret is that the 
higher the number, the more accurate the characterization is. Yes. Um, and uh, we also performed this uh, Wisnov crowd uh, test using this algorithm on the data set uh, that I described. So for this, we had the link information modeled as the retweet between uh, users that are in the network. And uh, then we identified the communities and uh, we picked one from each community to form a diverse crowd. But more important thing here is that we wanted to study what kind of diversity can actually make a crowd intelligent. Because in this domain, at least for now, we do not know whether the users that are diverse based on their conversation about the soccer teams is able to perform better than the users that are diverse based on their conversation about different soccer player position. And um, if we look at their content, use the knowledge graph, we can identify what soccer team and what soccer position different terms uh, correlates with. So that's why uh, using such an approach, uh, we can perform that study. And um, what we identified was that um, the users that were, uh, the crowds that were assembled based on the position that they uh, refer to, um, the average uh, wisdom score for such crowds was higher than 81% uh, of the individuals that we had uh, uh, in, 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 our, in, our, in our study. And, but the users that are assembled based on the diversity identified based on teams were actually performing better. So in, uh, essentially in this domain, the diversity in terms of teams may, uh, can get us better crowd uh, in form of, as far as the prediction of a, a soccer captain is concerned. Yeah, because it's the team that kind of matters eventually. Right? Yeah. <laughs> So um, another study that we performed was the uh, was an exploratory network analysis uh, study where we consider the uh, uh, Twitter network of a high school uh, student and then um, we were trying to identify what kind of uh, topics or what specifically what what sports teams and music bands are. Uh, resulting into the conversational communities or dividing their conversations and uh, so so uh, the idea here is that uh, using this tool you can perform such exploratory studies on the network data at, uh, at, at hand um, another uh, 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 another thing that we did in one of our content based uh, diversity measure uh, where we were uh, inferring the intent of the tweet, we um, we tried to understand why such a diversity, that is diversity based on intent, can lead a, a crowd to uh, a better captain selection. So for this, uh, we had a random forest classifier uh, classifying the intent of the tweet, and uh, we mapped the important terms from that to the domain specific knowledge graph and again identify the appropriate context, actually appropriate generic uh, knowledge graph concept that covers most of those terms and um, try to see whether the uh, soccer player that corresponds to that term actually got better fantasy uh, points. So we use this as the explanation of uh, uh, of, 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 of the diversity. Um, so the contributions of this thesis um, we have come up with uh, methodologies for uh, diversity input from uh, social media text to drive intelligent crowd selection. Uh, we have come up with a contextual uh, similarity measure. Um, we have a community direction and uh, characterization algorithm. And the last thing that I described, a framework to understand uh, machine learning algorithm given the application. Um, and 
the questions that I began with that is it possible to infer diversity using social media data. So as we showed that uh, the diverse crowd that we assemble actually has uh, more judgment diversity. Um, what kind of diversity can lead to an accurate prediction? So we have a framework to understand uh, diversity and crowd wisdom. So if you uh, if you are not sure of the kind of diversity you want to explore, you can use this uh, framework. If you are sure, then you can start with only those domain-specific knowledge graphs to identify the diverse crowd. And then this is, such a diversity measure allows uh, wiser crowd selection. So as we saw that um, the crowds that we select, they on an average have a better prediction than uh, almost uh, 85 better prediction than 85% uh, of, of, of the individuals. Um, and this is one of the work that we have uh, uh, started uh, where um, we are trying to see the effect of uh, the wisdom of crowd effect for the geopolitical uh, forecasting. And uh, the initial results that we have from this is that um, you observe this effect that the diversity-based crowd selection outperforms the random crowd. Uh, if you consider the sample set as the top 30% uh, of, uh, of uh, forecasters. Um, and these are just some other works that I have been uh, involved into. I have um, worked on uh, distributed and parallel computing and graph algorithms as part of my internship at uh, PNNL. Um, there was one publication from this, but I, I learned a lot and, and whatever I was working on actually became a part of a product that is now a startup company. Um, I worked on the intersection of machine learning, specifically clustering and uh, graph algorithms. Um, it was also a pleasure working with EasyDI on uh, computer assisted coding and then we defined a graph data modeling based approach to solve that problem and uh, we have a patent pending for that and um, I worked on the um, uh, SOX project where we were trying to see whether the social media communications can be used uh, during the disaster response and these are the publications uh, related to this. And for all that, uh, for all these studies, I have um, used knowledge graph in one form or, or another one. So for example, for distributed and parallel computing, I was performing uh, all the system tests that I came up with uh, using uh, the DBpedia and Freebase knowledge graphs and used the knowledge graph uh, for the disaster response work and um, also for the computer assisted coding work and also for the clustering and graph algorithms work. Um, apart from this, I also worked on uh, a self-driving car nano degree where I worked <coughs> on uh, uh, these three areas and it was really fun working on some of the projects. Um, these are some of the results from visualization from there where in one uh, the system performs the object detection, uh, semantic segmentation on the top right, left hand. Uh, the system is able to do the behavior cloning to drive the car on its own. It's an end to end uh, learning mechanism. And then this is for the path planning that uh, when you have highway traffic, how do you um, decide changing lanes? So it was, it was fun working on, on this. I worked on this for one year. Um, I also had great time mentoring uh, Pavan Kalyan for the co-training based multi-view clustering and um, Abhishek will defend uh, next week about inverse reinforcement learning based text augmentation to improve harassment detection. Um, acknowledgements, uh, so dissertation committee I would rather call mentors, uh, Dr. Prasad. Um, you have been very selfless in uh, uh, in guiding us. Um, your doors are always open for discussion, and um, you're never uh, 
asked me to take the appointment before I need to come and discuss. Uh, uh, thank you very much for all the inputs and uh, I think I started working with you way back. Uh, it's been like ages. <laughs> so it has, uh, it has been pleasure and I have learned a lot from you. Uh, Dr. Chen, I'm not sure. Uh, uh, I, I, I believe you can uh, listen to this, um, but um, um, uh, there's a lot to say, but I, I describe some specific instances. Sometimes um, I gave up on things, but um, he didn't give up on me. <laughs> uh, he came and grabbed me for the meetings, even when I didn't show up, because I just thought that um, uh, the work's not going nowhere. Um, thank, you all. <laughs> thank you for the uh, encouragement. It, uh, it, it meant a lot. Um, and as I said, there's, there's a lot to say. Um, Brad, yeah, it has been a pleasure. Um, uh, to summarize, uh, the Friday 2 to 3 or 1 to 2 time was probably the best time of the week. It was, uh, thank you very much for, first of all, coming up with the proposal uh, using which uh, I was funded. Um, it has, and, and based on which the whole thesis was, uh, was defined. So, um, I'm not sure whether you are aware of it, but you played a huge role in, uh, in, in all the things that the whole discussion was based on the, the topic that you came up with. So, uh, Very good publications. I wish we could have taken use of it to continue more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's productive. Yeah. And yeah, <laughs> Valerie, I'm not sure uh, whether Valerie is listening to this. Um, if not, I'll show the video recording. But. Um, she has no, I'm listening. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, she has been a great mentor. Um, I don't know, I have had so many discussions with her. Um, several of those were non-technical and the way um, she has motivated me was, I believe, the most important reason why I was uh, able to do my publications. Um, I, 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 I don't know whether I, I, I have been able to do those publications and, and she was up until midnight if the paper deadline was midnight. And I remember uh, for one conference I said that oh deadline is after uh, 15 days and she's like so why are you worrying I, uh, I'll, I'll work with you and, and, and we would actually get that paper out within 15 days and uh, have, have it, had it accepted. Um, so um, yeah, yeah, thank you very much. And yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, advisor, mentor, guide, a lot of words, uh, academic father, and uh, I don't know, you can come up with several words. Um, yeah, starting from the time you remember me meeting you. <laughs> uh, even before that, I remember you. <laughs> I believe I, I, I know about you from uh, 2010. And right from that time, I decided that uh, I want to go and um, and harass him. Um, and and I, I, I remember the way I, I communicated uh, uh, my interest to him <laughs> it was pretty unusual, <laughs> and hence he he remembers it at all. But th th there's a lot to say. But one thing that I'd like to point out is that um, um, he has been so selfless that uh, he uh, compromised his sleep at night for me to succeed. Um, Especially at my age. <laughs> I don't want to say it. Uh, it's, it's, Valerie uh, is younger than I am. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, uh, it's, it's just uh, great to have you. It was, uh, it was just a blessing for me to be here, learn with you and um, um, if I could give you an example of uh, how much you have influenced, I have uh, started even uh, borrowing the exact phrases that you use in our Gujarati language as well as in English. So I have I have learned a lot, and and thanks for being um, kind and patient with me uh, for all the encouragement and learning experiences. I'll I'll, I'll take all of them with me. Uh, and have already started sharing them uh, uh, with, with, with others. Um, so he, 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 it's very difficult to forget, he jumped in the car and given a talk at his university 
in India, and then he, you know, joined me in the car, you know, on my way back to either home or airport. I don't remember that. <laughs> and I want to watch. You were actually going to meet Narendra Modi that day. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. So I was going to meet, uh, you know, then Chief Minister and now uh, Prime Minister for meeting to, you know, nearby city, and then he, you know, just. Uh, yeah, he kept on saying no for uh, almost 45 minutes and then he said, okay, I'll think. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it, it has been a pleasure. I have also had uh, some great mentors along the way. Uh, Dr. David Haglin um, taught me a lot about uh, technical as well as non-technical aspects. Uh, Dr. Daniel and of course, uh, Amant, I have started working with him when I joined and uh, learned a lot of the things uh, from him, uh, mostly about uh, how to deal with Dr. Shet and, um, <laughs> and and not get freaked out, uh, <laughs> and also how to deal with Valerie. <laughs> yeah, no, but, uh, uh, and also um, uh, Yogesh Bhatt, who has, uh, whose advices has uh, shaped my life from the beginning. So I'd like to just mention then his name. That? No, that's uh, oh, those are my also. mentors. Yeah, they have uh, helped me in defining my technical journey as well as non-technical journey. And of course, my uh, sister Shruti. Uh, um, and thanks to all the collaborators, I may have missed the lot of names in the collaborators. Uh, but these were the ones that I had uh, pleasure working with. Um, recently, Swati and Abhishek, uh, especially Swati, I have uh, had great fun uh, working with her. And uh, of course, friends um, and my family, my parents, um, who have always encouraged me, uh, my wife, and yeah, my son. <laughs> it's been so special. Um, um, from the time we have conceived him, I have got uh, um, three of my papers accepted, um, got my uh, defense scheduled, got the job. So, I don't know, he's, he's very special. <laughs> um, and of course, uh, all the funding sources, uh, PNNL who funded me for, for, for a lot of time and um, was funded from the SOX and harassment and um, yeah the army research office grant that funded the thesis for the most part and yeah these are my publications and so are some references that I used and yeah I'm open for the questions thank you all right the audience uh Questions for me? Uh, can you talk about any like uh, failed attempts you had at this that you didn't mention or stuff that you maybe pushed aside that they didn't work and then you decided on this one? There have been several failed attempts. Um, if I talk about uh, technical work, then uh, we certainly wanted to try applying the knowledge graph based approach for the HFC data analysis, but um, we found that uh, we didn't have the updated knowledge graph and hence we couldn't perform uh, <coughs> that part. So that is uh, the most recent, um, I wouldn't say failed attempt learning experience. Um, and, and yeah, throughout the journey there, there have been several, I, couldn't publish the work that I wanted to publish real bad. That was about uh, um, distributed and parallel uh, graph processing uh, framework. Um, but yeah, I learned from that. And so, yeah. It's more systems oriented, uh, you know, uh, hardcore graph graph performance, uh, you know, graph algorithm and the performance on yeah. high performance computing. That was part of the work he was doing at Pacific National. Uh, national lab. Parallel yeah, it, it would be in distributed parallel computing, uh, but high performance computing for doing graph algorithms. Um, it's it also kind of uh, 
gives you a sense that um, when you pick up a topic, um, understanding how well developed it is, what delta you can do, having enough knowledge of the community and having enough mentorship available, all those play a role in the success. So all those play a key role, yeah. probably the most important role. <laughs> I said all those play the yeah. most important role, uh, not just our role. So yeah. the, the whole thing in terms of PhD, problem selection, um, but uh, I discussed somewhere else in Okora, basically ideal situations I like the work that uh, he did, but a number of other students uh, that work very well is that during your PhD, uh, not at the start, during your PhD, you realize that something is going to be very important, impactful, and doable. And you do that, uh, and by the time you come up with the results, you are absolutely the first to you know show something. So I think. Uh, the what is the title of your wisdom paper? Knowledge of enhanced community detection and characterization. So you can say that you can say several first here, right? I mean, the first work I think on uh, using this large amount of social media based volunteer data as opposed to very different kind of data collected for community detection and visible crowd thing, and some other smaller things. But then you know the first work also on demonstrating this graph. Um, you know, use of knowledge graph, domain knowledge, to give you the context as part of the diversity in various other ways of selecting the crowd and its positive results in use of you know, that smart crowd selected using the knowledge graph as the basis <coughs> to give you a better result. And although, and so this is the first paper of that kind, and that's also in the top conference wisdom. While Unfortunately, this PhD has to end and he has to move on. If you look at deeply um, the work that has involved in kind of taking the knowledge graph and mapping to a graph-centric data, which is on social media, in a very in a generic sense, is likely quite novel. I have not proven that, but it's uh, very novel and largely applicable to, to many situations. It's with far bigger applicability than the wisdom crowd that he evaluated and published you know, in wisdom. So that is a very, so the, in the, yesterday we were having chat that um, a lot of uh, efforts take uh, knowledge graph, but then dumb it down by mapping it to vector embeddings. And you lose, like he showed the knowledge graph structure and the relationship, edges, edge weights you should. You lose that semantics, that meaning in the inherent data and in the domain. Yeah, so my question was more oriented as like, uh, obviously you got some impressive results that you showed in this, but like, uh, uh, I just want to hear more about stuff that you tried and got bad results, and then you referred to uh, whatever techniques you used in this presentation. So bad results. Um, I wouldn't say bad results, but stuff on which you improved. To yeah. Finally, so, get to mm -hmm. this solution. So, so uh, the first content-based uh, techniques that we started with, we didn't have great results uh, for the kind of in form of the kind of results that we want. That is the diverse crowd outperforming random crowds. So that's why we went along and started exploring these different clustering techniques. Even in that, uh, one distance measure based clustering was not performing as well. So that's why we had to look into the multi-view clustering. So the master's students that I worked with, uh, specifically we started uh, looking into multi-view clustering because the one view clustering wasn't working. So that was that's why uh, that, that's the technique that, that we use. But Again, all these techniques, they were uh, getting us the crowd, but not giving us the explanations. So that is why we had to look into the kind of algorithm that can give us both. So that's why I started working on uh, this knowledge graph based uh, detection as well as explanation algorithm. So, so yeah, that is how I would describe uh, as far as the core technical approaches are concerned of how I switch from one from one. Can you have a question?
<laughs> you have this wisdom score uh, of seven. As a broad impact, uh, if you want to influence people, like you, you imagine you have some crazy ideas and you want to influence people in the world, does it mean that you can create a, a team of seven people share, trying to convince them, sharing the ideas, and then start disseminating on the web? Like, would it be impactful? So, um, uh, the there is a work on uh, identifying the influencers in social media. So uh, what all those words are trying to do is trying to find the users who are positioned at a strategic location in the network as well as have a higher impact. So they optimize these two criteria to identify such subset of users who can then, <laughs> who if activated, can influence a lot of users. So, so all those algorithms, they are studied under the influencer detections and, and, and that. Um, in here, um, we were trying to get uh, users who are positioned uh, um, away from each other, but our objective was to get such users uh, so that they are independent from each other. Uh, we, we, we did not try on what happens if we ask them to spread some information because that wasn't the criteria in the optimization at all. So um, you could extend something like this, add one more criteria and come up with such a crowd who can influence most of the users. But, but yeah, this is how I would say it's, it's different. Um, our objective was different and hence was not part of the optimization objectives that we had. But, but yeah, that's, that's certainly a possibility. I have last question, Travis. Uh, great job for uh, the visitation. Uh, can you uh, give us maybe one or two uh, other um, problems where you can take the wisdom of crowd and apply it like, you know, right away? Uh, so this geopolitical forecasting uh, world that we have uh, started with, so uh, Brett could tell you more about it, but there's an IRPA competition where the, the users are predicting the results or outcomes of the real world events like elections and that. So that is one of the domains that I see this work can be applied to. We have, we have started doing that. Um, apart from that, um, I would say generically any prediction problem in which the luck as well as skill, they both are the factors. There uh, you can see the application of this uh, more uh, often than uh, those who are uh, niche uh, domains. So, so that's why fantasy uh, sports is uh, one of the example, but um, if you could have such domains, then, then yeah, that is where uh, this could be applied more, yeah. Thanks. Thank you.